Two of the powerhouses in Division II football clash tonight in McKinney. Valdosta State seeks its fifth national championship as Ferris State eyes its first in program history. And with that, we say hello and happy Saturday evening. Thanks for spending some of it with us here in McKinney. Drew Carter, Kelly Stauffer up here in the booth. Chris Budden joins us on the sideline in just a moment. And Kelly, these teams have been waiting a long time to play in this game. We've got a good one tonight. The sense of anticipation as we were preparing for this, the classic in 18, they got eliminated in 19 by the same team, by the way, West Florida. Didn't have this in 20. They promised to be back here, and look what we have tonight. Maybe another classic. Could be. Last time they played, it was 49-47 in the D2 National Championship with Valdosta State winning. If Ferris State's going to get back in the win column, they've got a pretty good guy to do it. And Jared Bernhardt, who is maybe the coolest story in all of college sports. Yeah, how about we build an offense in football ar around the best lacrosse player in the entire country. The skill set is an amazing translation to the football game. The change of direction, the foot plan. Instead of having a stick in his hand to assist, he now throws the football, but he's electric, Drew, with his feet in this game. Bernhardt scored more than 200 goals in four years at the University of Maryland. On the other side, when Valdosta has the football, they're going to keep it on the ground. By the end of tonight, Kelly, they could have three guys above 1,000 yards. Incredible. Two running backs in Tompkins and, and McGill, and then Ivory Durham is the trigger puller. He's maybe the fastest player on this team and an incredibly balanced offense. Going to be tough tonight. Ferris State has their hands full. For more on that, let's go down to the head coach who's with Chris Budden. Coach, three years ago, you were on this field playing the same opponent in a shootout you lost by two. How have you used that moment to invigorate your guys this week? We really haven't. Um, you know, they got a big ring on their fingers from 2018. We don't, so different year, different opportunity, and hopefully we make the best of it. I appreciate it. Good luck tonight. Thank you. All right, thanks, Chris. Tony Anise picked up his 100th win at Ferris State last week when they shellacked Shepard 55-7. Those Rams were the best scoring offense in the country. The Bulldogs shut them down, and they are here in the national championship game. Ferris won the toss. They deferred. Valdosta State will receive and start with the football. Ferris State, the number one team in the country in their home red uniforms. Valdosta State, technically the road team tonight, comfortable on this stage. Underway in the Division II National Championship. Blazers start with the football, and we've been so excited all week to watch this guy, Ivory Durham, Kelly. Ivory Durham is a self-described pocket passer first, but don't be misled because this guy is electric with his feet, straight line speed, quickness from side to side, and that's why this offense is incredibly balanced, Drew, is because of this young man's ability to throw it, and obviously the three-headed monster that are all going to be over 1,000 yards most likely before this game is out. We saw that graphic, Kelly. You know, Durham himself played a little running back before he became the starting quarterback for Valdosta, but now he's the QB and he's thrown for 30 touchdowns this year. He let it rip on the first play last week. He does the same tonight, and it's broken up. Dangerous throw on the first play from scrimmage. And Leandre Gallimore was once again the target. Remember the vertical route last week for a touchdown to start the game and this ball kind of got caught up in the wind. There's a, a really stiff left to right wind blowing as we're looking out at the field and that one definitely was affected. But that's who this offense is with Ivory Durham. It's a big play vertical pass game and then a really balanced violent run game. Sintel Williams on the break up there for Ferris State. Gallimore played a little DB as this time Durham decides to keep it and you see the wheels right away near the first down marker. And Drew, Ferris defensively is probably the best defensive team that Valdosta State has faced this year. They're very good up front. They're very physical. They're fast on the back end as well. And as you mentioned, Kelly, there is a stiff breeze going to the north. Valdosta State is facing it right now on their first offensive possession. That's a big Texas flag, as yeah. most things are here in Texas. It's blown straight out. 
This is a big stadium. It's a high school stadium. It seats 12,000. Durham on third down and short. Keeps it on the ground. Seth McGill swallowed up. Brings up fourth down. Ferris State's defense came to play tonight. Austin Simpson, number 91, the defensive tackle, actually blew up the game plan a week ago, and they're getting after it already today. And that's one of the things that Valdosta State told us is that Ferris is probably the most physical front that they faced all year, and you could see it on that play, kind of redirecting the line of scrimmage backwards. Sam Jira dead in there as well, big number 99. It brings out Eston Field to kick it away for Valdosta State. They got a piece. It'll be great field position for the Bulldogs to start right around their own 45-yard line. Chase Ford is there to get a hand on it. You know, and we talk about these dynamic quarterbacks, and they are exactly that. They're electric. But what does the game come down to so often? The fundamentals, the turnovers, and special teams. And we've already seen a big special teams play with Ferris State there. And one thing you don't want to do if you're playing against Ferris State is give this guy good field position. Last week, Jared Bernhardt ran for five touchdowns in the first half against Shepard. And as we expected in that plus one run scheme, Bernhardt keeps it, and he's got speed. Jared Bernhardt down the sideline into the end zone. Welcome to the big stage, Jared Bernhardt. 56 yard house call. This did not take long, and this is what you see. You see a quarterback power run game with, quite frankly, one of the most dynamic athletes in college football at any level. It translates perfectly from lacrosse to football. And my, oh, my, what a way to start the national championship game for that young man. The head coach, Tony Anise, told us he could play anywhere. Alabama, Michigan, take your pick. He's here at Ferris State. He scores. Extra point is no good from Cy Barnett. But Jared Bernhardt, he's played in a couple national championships in lacrosse. In his first one in football, he takes it the distance on the first play from scrimmage. Jared Bernhardt is new to the game of football, but he makes incredible decisions. You can see right here, it's power football to the right, and it's a passing concept to the left, and then Jared Bernhardt just makes a decision on what he wants, and in this case, it was keeping the ball in his hands. That was an electric way to start this game. Jared Bernhardt, last week, it took him a little bit longer to get going. He had a 56-yard run on the first play from scrimmage, and then he scored on the touchdown. <laughs> this time, he didn't wait as long. He ended up quickly at a 56-yard touchdown run on their first play. So you can, you can see the straight-line speed. We didn't even get to see the lateral movement and his foot plant really on that particular play. A massive offensive line that washed everything from right to left and then that quarterback can get after it quickly. So now it's Valdosta State in a position they're not super comfortable in. They're 12 and one this season. As Ivory Durham brings that dynamic Blazers offense back out on the field leading the country in total offense this year. Keep it on the ground with Seth McGill on first down, gain of two. So, Drew, who Valdosta State is offensively is, remember, the home of the air raid is Valdosta State. So, conceptually in the pass game, they are the air raid offense, but it's more of a Cam Newton-Auburn approach in the run game led by their quarterback, Ivory Durham. You saw the head coach Gary Goff spent eight seasons at Tiffin and brought a lot of those same concepts to Valdosta, his alma mater. Durham on the move. It'll be third down and long for Valdosta State after they went three and out on their first possession. And to me in this game, th this is the matchup that's important. It's Ivory Durham and this defense for Ferris State that's going to A, get after him, and they're also going to cover on the back end and force Durham to get off his number one look, and when he does get off that look, sometimes he's a little erratic in the pass game.
Durham to pass on third down and eight. On the corner route, he's got his man. It's complete. First down, Valdosta State. And Brian Sons, their leading receiver this year. What a tremendously well-thrown football. There was pressure in Durham's face. The left tackle was getting pushed back a little bit, but that was thrown on a rope. Sons goes to the corner, and Gallimore was to the flat. It's a two-man concept, and Durham throws a rope outside. 71st catch of the year for Sons, the grad student at VSU. Now Durham keeps. Here's the speed again. Durham to the edge, ushered out of bounds inside Ferris State territory. Ivory Durham doesn't have the, the lateral quickness that a Jared Bernhardt does, but the straight line speed is absolutely electric, and there will be a lot of formationing and empty in the backfield in that pre-snap motion, all thinning the box to give Durham more hats up front. We asked Ivory Durham, how fast you're 40? He says, I haven't run it since my junior year of high school, but I guess about 4-4. He can sling it too, trying to find Sons again. Incomplete. Alex Thomas on the coverage, 0-on-0. Zero zero. And watch how Ivory Durham had to move his feet a little bit. The, the first choice wasn't there down the seam to a tight end, and so he comes off late, and the feet don't catch up with his eyes. And so he's a little erratic in those situations. And you saw the throw right there to Sons was off target. Now, talking with him this week, though, Kelly, he's a guy who learned how to be a pocket passer first when he was growing up, then learned how to run from the pocket. Here he keeps it again. And he's wrestled down after a short gain. It'll bring up another third down as Alex Bach is there on the stop. And this is the lead quarterback run you see an offensive lineman pulling in LeClaire and then it's a quasi fake to the running back McGill but McGill was really just a lead blocker on that play Durham the junior from Jacksonville with a third down and six wide open there's Leandre Gallimore, his other favorite target, another grad student, and another first down for Valdosta. And we'll welcome in everyone joining us now on ESPNU. Hope you enjoyed the basketball game with Houston coming out victorious. Drew Carter, Kelly Stoffer, Chris Budden with you from McKinney, Texas for the D2 National Championship. Hot start for Ferris State. Their quarterback, Jared Bernhardt, 56-yard touchdown on their first offensive play. Valdosta looking to respond with Seth McGill, the running back, right up the gut for about five. And Drew, in national championship games where it's probably going to be tight all night, when one team responds, you have to fight back immediately. And that's what this drive is about for Valdosta State. It's getting settled into the, the tempo of the game to some extent. And how does Valdosta State play offensively when they don't have the big play? Ferris State is all about limiting the explosive plays. Is Valdosta State going to be efficient enough to get points when they don't have that explosive in their back pocket? Ivory Durham with plenty of time. He's only been sacked twice this year. Let's it go toward the end zone, and it is incomplete. Brings up another third down. They're two for two on this drive. But Kelly, I want to go back to what you just said. Limiting the big plays, how does Ferris do that? Well, Ferris plays coverage on the back end, and it's called press quarter. So a lot of times they have two high safeties, and then it's kind of a shell look on the back end, but the corners will press the outside receivers, and it makes it very difficult to find lanes down the field. And it's really a, the essence is bend but don't break, and it forces the offense to methodically drive the ball in order to get points, and you're seeing it right here. Two for two on third down already this drive. Durham under duress, escapes the blitz, and he's near the sticks. Durham, the former running back, evaded the pass rush. It came from Liam Daly, maybe the best player on this Ferris State defense. And Drew, that's the risk if you blitz Liam Durham. 
I mean, Ivory Durham, you're Liam Daly gets after him. He's a free runner, but you talked about it. There's a running back skill set there, and he avoids him and moves, gaining the sticks in the line to gain. With that run, Durham is above 1,000 yards on the season. Now he goes back to the air for Gallimore, one of his favorite targets. No flag, lots of contact. It was Alex Thomas there on the stop. Alex Thomas covering the best vertical receiver at Gallimore that Valdosta State has from that inside slot fade. The reaching early by Alex Thomas wasn't really impacting the receiver's ability to go get that football. He did arrive just a skosh early, though. You're giving me that look, Drew. You thought that was <laughs> P.I., didn't you? Not for me to decide. <laughs> a lot of contact, though. Hey, it's a national championship. Little play. Durham hands it to Seth McGill again. And it'll bring up another third down and long as Ferris State continues to perform on early downs. It's Shaderick Bradford, number 33, with a stop. And that's the matchup that I'm interested in seeing. This offensive line that blocks in that run game for De Valdosta State with those very soon to be three 1,000 yards rushers, including their quarterback, Ivory Durham. But it's this physical front for Ferris State. They don't blitz a ton because of the activity of those four down linemen. Here comes the 13th play of the drive. Two for two on third down. Durham pops it to his running back. McGill runs under it. Touchdown Blazers. Big response for Valdosta. Ivory Durham has the arm talent to throw it through a brick wall, but then he has touch like this at times. That's a running back going up the middle, matched up on the best defensive player by Ferris State, Liam Daly, and then dropping it in the bucket right out of the reach of the middle linebacker. Here's Eston Thiel, who's also the punter for the extra point, and Valdosta State leads. 18-yard touchdown to McGill, 13 plays, 75 yards, 5 minutes and 11 seconds. VSU responds. The shootout is on. Yeah, folks, strap in. Seven lead changes last time they met in the D2 National Championship in 2018. 49 47, Valdosta State won. Jared Bernhardt came to Ferris State looking to bring the Bulldogs their first ever national championship. He played in two national championships at Maryland as a lacrosse player. This is his first season playing football full time. Eston Thiel's kick is on the ground. Ferris State will be set up with more good field position at their own 40. Hey, folks, make sure to tune into our coverage of the FCS championship game on Saturday, January 8th at noon Eastern. For more information, go to NCAA.com, your official home for all 90 NCAA championships. I don't know if any of them will be as entertaining as this one is It'll shaping be up to be. Although North Dakota State and Montana State yeah. will be up to the task. And the Scenics in Montana mm. today were absolutely outstanding. Here's Bernhardt back to work. And man, he is so dynamic with the ball in his hands. Only a seven-yard gain on first down, so it'll bring his yards per carry down a little bit, but a solid gain. Drew, I am honestly an innocent bystander, kind of neutral in this game. But I can't wait for Ferris to get the ball back so that we can see this young man carry it again. He's absolutely amazing. If you don't know his story, three years at Maryland is the best lacrosse player in the country. Transfers to Ferris State to play ball. COVID 2020 canceled it. So he went to play another year, and here we are in the championship game. He keeps it again. Three plays, three carries for the quarterback. He's got another big pop. Jared Bernhardt inside the 10. It's the Bernhardt show in the D2 Natty. 48 yards. And it's the decision-making from the quarterback position. The read inside, the defensive end, Doolin crashes down on the running back, and so the lacrosse All-American pulls it and ends up at the five-yard line. I mean, just another day in the office for that young man. And Kelly, like you were saying, he actually moved to Ferris for a couple weeks, 
Then he went back to Maryland, decided might as well play one more lacrosse season, won the Tawaraton as the best player in the country. He's been the best player in the country all season for the Bulldogs. His second rushing touchdown tonight. Ferris back out in front. Ferris can play bully ball when they want to, and they're playing it right now. You see number 70, Sealer is pulling from the right to the left. It's kind of a tight G lead, which just means your guard is moving from one spot to the other side of the football, and then you give it to a dynamic ball carrier in Jared Perhart. That's almost unfair. Cy Barnett knocks it through after he missed the first one. Jared Bernhardt has two more rushing touchdowns. I love when this team has the football, and this young man is a closer, as we see right there. Tony Anise, the Ferris State head coach, on the right of your screen, talking with maybe the best thing that's ever happened to him as a head coach. Jared Bernhardt, the lacrosse transfer from Maryland, has two rushing touchdowns already tonight, Kelly. And that's pretty good thinking on the coach's part is to build an offense around the best lacrosse player in the country. Jared Bernhardt is electric with his feet. The change of direction, the patented foot plant that allows him to go laterally like you see right there. And he's dealing with this lacrosse stick in his hand, but the decision making on the football field is similar. He can throw the football when he has to, but man alive, he's absolutely massive when he keeps the ball on the ground. Look at that. Let's build an offense with this young man's skill set. I think it would work well, and Coach Anise was exactly right. It's worked pretty well for Ferris State ever since Tony Anise took over, now in his ninth season in Big Rapids. Valdosta State again trying to respond with Trayvon Roberts on the kickoff return, but just to put a bow on that conversation, Kelly, I mean, Anise was telling us that in eight of his nine seasons at Ferris State, they've led the country in quarterback rush yards. So when they saw this guy, Jared Bernhardt, who wanted to play football, they immediately knew, like you said, they could build their offense around him. And what they did is respond to an email. Yeah. It was actually the son of Tony and niece, Steve, that said, hey, Dad, we might need to follow up on this email. Right. And they did that. And one thing led to the other. And I think one of the most dynamic offensive players at any level is playing in this game today. His counterpart, Ivory Durham, is pretty dynamic in his own right. He swings it out here to his running back, Seth McGill, for a solid chunk on first down. Kelly, you mentioned the email. I mean, that's an email that's going to go down in the Ferris State Hall of Fame if they win tonight. Yeah, they better save that, no question. And Ferris is very physical defensively. So Ivory Durham and this offense for Valdosta State is going to have to deal with that. They're going to have to march the football, be efficient, because Ferris State is really good at eliminating the big plays. McGill on the ground this time, burst of speed. First down, Valdosta State. McGill, their leading rusher over 1,200 yards coming into tonight. And Liam Daly was in on that tackle, and he's the bell cow on the defensive side for Ferris State. He's a middle linebacker that plays deeper than a lot of linebackers do typically, but he gets a good perspective, and he reads and reacts from. You can see he's about five yards off the ball. That's probably about a yard deeper than most play. Durham to air it out again. Down the sideline, complete. Brian Sons is leveled out of bounds. No flag, but it counts. Huge pop for VSU, 33 yards. We talked about Ferris State likes to play press quarters, but you have to jam the guy outside, and that was an X release where the slot receiver goes outside with Sons. And then this absolutely was a penalty that should have been called. That was unfortunate. I'm not exactly sure what the officials were looking at. Alex Thomas came over and dropped him after he was out of bounds. Here's our first look at the second running back for Valdosta, Jamar Tompkins. Another guy who should go over the 1,000-yard mark tonight. Eight-yard gain on first down. But, Drew, we talked about the press quarters coverage by Ferris State. What you want to do to attack that, because it's it's two high safeties and then press man on the outside, but what you do is you 
X release by your two receivers to one side, and you typically can free a guy up, and that's what Son did on that last catch in the slot area on the sideline. Second down and short for Durham. Bounced it toward his running back, Tompkins. Another late hit, and this time they call it. It's Liam Daly. Two late hits on this drive, and now here's our first flag. And both of them were legit. This one's on Liam Daly. But the ball was thrown into the ground to begin with. This was, I think, a swing screen. The offensive linemen are trying to get out there, and maybe Liam Daly didn't know the ball actually skipped off the turf. After the flag, personal foul. Defense, number five. Half the distance from the previous spot. Automatic, first down. You think that's a possibility, Drew? I think you're right, Kelly. I mean, the guy's a senior. He's the leader of the defense, as we talked about. That, that'd be pretty uncharacteristic of him to do that if he saw the ball skip in there. Yeah, and Daly is running headlong, eyes down, into the running back. But I don't know. Now, it's either that or he thought maybe it was a backwards pass. So it could have been a lateral. Either way, it's a big penalty against Ferris State. It's going to set up first down for Valdosta State at the 12-yard line. Well, it is bowl season, everyone. And the only bowl game on the schedule for Monday afternoon, Old Dominion Tulsa. The Monarchs started the season 1-6. and six. They've reeled off five straight to get here. Tulsa also... Six and six, our coverage of the Myrtle Beach Bowl presented by Tax Act starts at 2.30 Eastern, 1.30 local in Tulsa on ESPN and the ESPN app. You want to tune into the Golden Hurricane to see a pretty cool comeback story. Shamari Brooks, over 900 rush yards after he missed all of last season with a torn ACL. So after the penalty against Liam Daly and Ferris State, it's first down and 10 for Valdosta. We've already had two lead changes tonight. We had seven in the 2018 championship between these two. Durham to Tompkins for a short gain on first down. Give him four yards. Ferris State defensively is a is a physical bunch from every level. They're putting the wood to ball carriers for Valdosta State. But Valdosta State, on the other hand, Drew, this is the second answer after big plays by Jared Bernhardt. The responses by Valdosta State have been epic. McGill is back in there. Trayvon Roberts in motion. He's the target. And he's got six. Ivory Durham with his second touchdown pass tonight. Trayvon Roberts scores it. Fantastic route by Trayvon Roberts. He starts as if he's going to the flat. And Valdosta State runs a lot of flat routes. And then he cues back inside and sets down in that zone, finding the void in that zone right on the goal line. And then it's the arm strength by Ivory Durham that you see on that play. Thiel's extra point is good. And Valdosta State content, Kelly, to dink it and dunk it. Ivory Durham last week ran for a career high 153 yards and hit a couple of big plays, including on their first offensive play to L.C. Gallimore. I mean, this is a guy who loves the big play, Kelly. Yeah, whether he's carrying the football or whether he's throwing it, he has a strong arm, and he told us, and you brought this point up earlier, that he's a pocket passer first, and the importance of that is that he learned to play the game inside the pocket before he learned to just use his feet instinctively. He would rather manipulate coverage than he would make a big play with his feet. And this young man has done a tremendous job. Remember, this is his first year starting for this program. And you know what's really impressive, Kelly, is 
he, he's been okay taking what the defense gives him. You talked about how Ferris State wants to take away the big play. Ivory Durham said, okay, we'll just stay yeah. in long drives. Yeah, and that was a key. You're right, because there aren't a lot of explosive with this Ferris State defense, and so we knew that Ivory Durham was going to have to be patient tonight to be successful, and he's done that on two really good drives. Kicked out of bounds by Ferris State and Jeremy Burrell. That's where they'll start on offense with Jared Bernhardt. And for more on him, let's go down to Chris Budden. It's really been an incredible story how he went from Maryland playing lacrosse to Ferris State at football. And it was at the urging of his dad, Jim. His dad was also a two-sport star in lacrosse and football. And said, spend your extra year. Email coaches. Just send something out. Maybe you'll get something. But in that process, his dad passed away. So he changed the subject with the email. And it was about how my dad, his dream was for me to spend my last year playing football. And that is what Coach Anise picked up on in the email because Coach Anise's dad also died his senior year of college. And that was the connection that said, I want this guy, I want to meet this kid. And by chance, he ended up at Ferris State. What a connection. Now he puts it on the ground, Chris, and Valdosta State says they're on top of it. Blazers force a turnover. They finally stop Bernhardt. Corey Roberts has it for VSU. They're inside the 10. The competitor in Jared Bernhardt, he really doesn't like to give up on plays. And remember, he's new to the game of football since he started playing lacrosse at Maryland. So it's in tight quarters. I think his knee might have been down before that ball came out. But also, we have to keep an eye on that right ankle. Jared Bernhardt came limping off the off the field after that play, and I'm not so sure that ball was still in possession when his knee was down. It was close. They called it a fumble on the field. Jadavian Williams, number 92, is trying to yank it out. Uh, it's so close. Don't know if that's something you could change. I think it's something that the replay booth should stop the game and take a further look at, no question about it. Well, they've got the game on hold right now, and they are going to take another look at it. Remember what constitutes a player being down is anything but the hand and the foot on the ground, and it looked like Jaron Bernhardt's knee was on the ground. However, there's Jared Bernhardt on the sideline. The bigger story is that young man limped off the sideline because his right ankle, actually I think it's his left, got twisted in a funny position. Actually, it is the right ankle, Drew. It looks like that right ankle got twisted a little bit, but I think the right knee's down yeah. when that ball is still in possession. I'm with you, Kelly. Great effort from Williams to wrestle that ball away from Bernhardt, who limped off the field. And by the way, Bernhardt has missed four games this season. This is the 14th game for Ferris, only his 10th. And that's an athlete that knows himself really well, and that pounding of his hand on the bench means that I don't know that I'm getting back to finish this dream, getting back in this game. It was the right ankle that got twisted underneath that pile a little bit. And this guy's a gamer. He's as tough as they come. So if there's a way, that young man will be out there. And such a big part of his game, Kelly, we've been talking about it all week, is that the cuts the cuts that he makes like he did on the lacrosse field. For more on Jared, let's go back down to Chris. Yeah, he just attempted running and he went and told the trainer, he said, I can go, but let's wrap it up some more. So he's gone into the medical tent to get that right ankle extra taped. All right, let's see if it's a fumble. After review, the ruling on the field stands. First down, Valdosta State. Indisputable video evidence is the standard and quite frankly, I thought we saw it on that. If you can pause it with the ball still in possession and the knee down, to me that's indisputable that the replay booth obviously did not agree. So it sets up. Valdosta State at the 10. Ivory Durham back to work. Two passing touchdowns already tonight. Throws a dart. Brian Sons, the intended target, and he's out of bounds. Got the injury. 
injured Blazer down on the field as the starting left guard, Richard LeClaire, the freshman out of Middleburg, Florida. And it was LeClaire that actually got taken off the field the last time there was stoppage. So that young man is a freshman starting at left guard, and it's important to have continuity up front, especially against this Ferris State defensive front that I think is the best that Valdosta State's offensive line has seen this season. Well, Kelly, I mean, you talk about an eventful first quarter. We've already had a couple lead changes in this rematch of the 2018 Division II National Championship. Two of the best offenses in the country, and they have looked like it so far. Well, we talked about what a, the over and under would be in this yeah. game, and I put it somewhere around 90-plus, and I don't know if we're going to get there, but we might. There we see Jared Bernhardt out of that medical tent, and we'll check on Jared when we come back. He might get to dump some french fries on his head coach, too. Is that a thing? Is you that what should, they do? You should know. You're doing the game. Valdosta keeps it on the ground. Short gain, maybe one yard for Seth McGill. Yeah, just to wrap that up, I, I think that is what they do. Instead is of Gatorade, right? Kelly, would you let them do that to you, French fries? Yeah, I would. I wouldn't want the Gatorade. It's going to be like 32 degrees and on the borderline of freezing at game time. So no yeah. cold Gatorade for me, I for hope, sure. I hope your private jet can fly in those conditions, Kelly. I think it can. I okay. think we'll make it. Good. Gary Goff's team faces third and goal. Ivory Durham floats it. Incomplete. Trying to find the big 6'5 grad student Victor Talley on the jump ball. Sidney McLeod there on the coverage for Ferris State. And fantastic coverage by Sidney McLeod. You press the outside receiver who's a big body. You force him to the sideline. You get in his hip pocket and you make a college quarterback throw a very difficult pass to complete to a college receiver. That's how you play press coverage. 25-yard try for Eston Thiel, 13 for 17 this season, and he's one for one on field goals in the national championship. Four-point lead for Valdosta State. The coverage scheme that Ferris State runs, Kelly, is reminiscent of one Pat Narduzzi, whose Pitt Panthers won the ACC this year. In fact, the defensive coordinator, Ryan Hodges, told us that's where it comes from. He was watching some old tape. Exactly, and it's, it's very tough to get big plays against because it's kind of the ultimate bend but don't break. You press outside receivers, and you force college receivers to try to catch fade passes from college quarterbacks, which is really a low percentage pass to complete. And it's just difficult to get those explosives. And it's hard to get touchdowns in the college game if you don't have at least one explosive somewhere during the drive. Blazers have been explosive for the entire playoff run. You see they hang 66 in round two after the bye against West Georgia. It got a little hairy last week no in Valdosta question. against the Colorado School of Mines. They were dominating that game. I texted you early in that game. I'm like, there's a different level of athlete with Valdosta State versus the School of Mines. But they made a game of it. Came down to an onside kick attempt. Yeah, the ore diggers really dug themselves out of that hole. And it's a touchback starting at the 25 for Ferris State. Will we see Jared Bernhardt, Chris? Uh, not on this drive. He came out of the medical tent and tried to run. He wasn't feeling good, so he's gone back into the tent. It's taken off the tape and is trying to re-tape it underneath of his shoe, but currently still in the tent right now. All right, we will keep tabs on number 12. Jared Bernhardt, potentially the Harlan, Harlan Hill winner, which goes to the best player in Division Two. Now, luckily for Tony Anise and Ferris State, they've got a pretty good option behind him. Myleek Mitchell, number zero, threw for 500-plus in October when he came in for the injured Bernhardt. He can throw and he can run. Welcome to the championship, Mitchell, with a big hit from Valdosta and Corey Roberts. And, Drew, the thing that does change, change with Myleek Mitchell coming in, you see a lot more kind of run-pass option, especially when there's 11 personnel out there, simply meaning one tight end, one running back. A heavy dose of run pass option, but trust me, 
Ferris State isn't going to wander away from the quarterback power run very far. Offense, number six, five-yard penalty, second down. That's the receiver, Tyrese Hunt-Thompson, on the false start. Mitchell, the sophomore, out of Cleveland. Keeps it on the ground on second down. Big pop for Jeremy Burrell. The second string running back could go the distance. Ferris State back out in front. Jeremy Burrell goes 78 yards. You could design a defense to have a free runner, in this case, Jalen Jackson, that is the safety that has to make that tackle. And if you don't, nobody else is there. And then it's a timely cut by Burrell, and he ends up in the end zone. So you take the big play guy, Jared Bernhardt, out of the game, and you say, hey, running back, go get your own, and he does just that. Extra point good from Cy Barnett. Bulldogs back in front. By three, Jeremy Burrell, the junior from Benton Harbor, Michigan, goes 78 yards to the crib. And it was a true quarterback zone read. And my league, Mitchell, makes the good decision by giving it up in the zone run to the running back. And then it's just getting a lot of your own. So much in the run game with the running back is creating your own shot with a muddy look. So you have a free runner in the safety, Jalen Jackson. Make that guy miss, and then all bets are off, and Burrell ends up in the end zone. The shootout is on. A wild, wild west type shootout here in Texas. Last time they met, 49-47. We might eclipse How those, numbers, those numbers, numbers tonight. The two best total offenses in the country. They both average more than 43 points per game. Yeah, and so if you're watching at home, this is what you need to do. We'll tell you when we're going to commercial break, <laughs> and then you'll know when we're at halftime. That's when you go get your business done. Right. Go to the refrigerator, whatever you need to do. Outside of that, you're going to miss something. Well, Dasta State's response will start at the 25. We've mentioned it a few times. Let's show it to you. It's one of the greatest games in D2 history. The first time the national championship was played here at McKinney ISD Stadium. These two teams christened it with an incredible shootout. 49-47 on the Philly special type play. That was Ivory Durham, who threw a touchdown. Back then, he was a freshman. Ferris State had the response with Cy Barnett, now mainly the kicker for the Bulldogs, but the two-point conversion, they tried a Philly special of their own, and they came up short. And the theme there was incredibly big plays in bunches, and so now it's a matter of answering. We've talked about it. Ivory Durham isn't going to have the explosive in the numbers he's used to, but right now he's been a patient quarterback and now he's limping off to the sideline oh no last thing valdosta state wants to see jared bernhardt ferris state star quarterback limped off earlier in the first quarter ivory durham does the same and it brings out sammy edwards the freshman out of saint augustine florida and this is the risk if you have an offense that you're making your quarterback a viable runner of the football sometimes it's just simply a big man rolling on the ankle edwards with a handoff on his first snap to jamar tompkins let's go back to the durham injury after he just limped off the field and this is a called quarterback power you can see those offensive linemen pulling and getting in front of ivory durham and it's just the defensive lineman grabbing the ankle and kind of rolling. You know, the death roll of a crocodile. You grab something and you roll around a little bit. That's what that defensive lineman looked right there. Did someone ever do that to you when you were yeah, playing, Kelly? Yeah. No question about it. They Sounds get like your 
your shoulder pinned as a quarterback and they death roll and drive it right into the turf. Third and short for Edwards, back on the ground. It's Tompkins again, maybe on the second effort. He might have pushed his way for first down yardage. And it is a first down for Valdosta State. And by the way, Jared Bernhardt, the quarterback on the other side, just told his offensive line he's good to go and he's coming back. Well, that's fantastic news. In the meantime, Sammy Edwards, the freshman, doesn't have a lot to show on his resume at this level in, in the pass game part of it. That ball came out late. And yeah, they're, they're certainly, pausing the game right now. Yeah, Valdosta State got on it, but the thing is you can't fumble the ball forward, and it was that fumble forward that could have actually met the line to game. All right, so we got a lot to sort out when we come back. This is worth the price of admission. D2 National Championship, 20 to 17. 20 to 17 after one. The two best offenses in America have been as advertised, but Valdosta State's quarterback, Ivory Durham, was gimpy to end that first quarter. Here's the play where he got dinged up, Kelly. Yeah, the design quarterback run and the defensive lineman, Matty Abay, grabs the ankle and rolls a little bit. And as far as we can tell, that's how it got dinged up. And then it's the, the third down play right there that Valdosta State was given the line to gain after the fumble. And the good news is we see Ivory Durham sprinting onto the field right now. Doesn't matter who you're rooting for. That's a great sign. This guy is fun to watch. The former running back receiver hybrid for Valdosta State. Now the starting quarterback as a junior. He's thrown for 30 touchdowns coming in, and he's already thrown for two tonight in the first quarter. Valdosta State with those air raid roots. Three receivers to the top of your screen. Quick throw to the other side, and he airmailed it, trying to find his favorite target, Brian Sons. And that's one of the things, Drew, that we need to keep an eye on is Ivory Durham is a tremendous passer of the football, but when your platform doesn't feel right, regardless of what foot it is, whether it's your plant foot, your push foot, whatever, and that time it was high and and hard and outside and not accurately thrown by any means. Keep it on the ground this time with Jamar Tompkins. And it'll bring up a third down and long now for Valdosta State. Going back to that, Kelly, when you were playing and you think about when your ankles didn't feel so good, where did you usually miss? You know, when you can't drive off the back foot, if it's your plant foot, then you tend to miss high. But if your front foot, more of your plant foot when you throw it, after you've dropped back and you're moving forward, then sometimes you end up a little bit low because you're not really coming over the top of that ball. And so we'll keep an eye on that where Ivory Durham is concerned. A little movement before the snap. It's gonna be Ralph Singleton. Prior to the snap, ball start, offense, number 51. Five yard penalty, third down. So, Drew, it's the right ankle for Ivory Durham. And so think about the right-handed passer. And we're going to see 51, Ralph Singleton, twitch on the right side. But as you plant as a quarterback and then you push off that foot, if you're a little late doing that or you don't do it aggressively, sometimes the ball sails on you. And especially the wind's at his back right now. And that ball definitely took off on it. Five wide, Durham takes the short drag route. Not even close to the first down for Antoine Dixon, but there is a flag. We think it could be a too many men on the field. Greg Gomp has been busy lately. Illegal substitution. Defense, more than 11 players on the field for snap. Five yards from the previous spot, third down. So they give the five right back, sets up third down and eight as it was originally. That was Shaderic Bradford, the defensive lineman, bottom of your screen. 
Looks like he couldn't decide which way he was going. <laughs> and when you're a defensive lineman, you can't exactly sneak around very well. <laughs> He's 5'11", 285. Here we go. Three plays, three flags. Part of the snap. Ball start. Offense, number 50. Five-yard penalty. Third down. That time it was the center, Ty Hinson. Yeah, it's not a good thing when your center and or your quarterback for, gets the snap count. And Ty Henson seems like he double clutched on this particular snap. You know, Valdosta State has scored 17 points and they've lived in third and a pass down. And so we'll see if they can convert here. Third down and 13 for Durham. Has to run on that bum ankle. Batted in the air and picked off. Ferris State has it. The nickelback, Sintel Williams. That's his fourth interception of the season. Tops on the team. Defenses do the trip, the tip drill all the time, and this is exactly why. Ivory Durham forces this ball in late. He gets flushed out of the pocket. Throws a high hard one once again. The ball gets batted up. Williams comes down with it. Liam Daly was also right there. The second turnover of this game, and we'll see if Ferris State can capitalize on this one. Kelly, they should have called it like they were playing shortstop and, no and left field. Williams came up with it regardless. It was Alex Thomas number zero on the initial deflection. Brings back Malik Mitchell, so no Jared Bernhardt. And the lefty slings it over the middle on the first play of a new drive, and it falls incomplete. Trying to hook up with Marcus Taylor, the speedy wideout. And Marcus Taylor is the, at least catch-wise, is the leading receiver on this team. He's at the slot, just gets a quick release and goes vertical. And Mitchell has a live arm. He kind of sidearms it a little bit, and that ball was just slightly out of the reach of Taylor. So if you're just joining us, Jared Bernhardt went to the sideline. He was limping. We have not seen him since the late first quarter. Mitchell keeps it on the RPO, and he is going nowhere. For more on Jared Bernhardt, let's go down to Chris. Yeah, he's down here with his helmet on, dancing around, wants to go in. You mentioned that he went up to all of his offensive linemen, gave him a fist bump, and he said, I'm good. Is he good enough to run the offense? That's a head coach decision. That's a good question right there, Chris. That's exactly how that decision is made. My Malik Mitchell is no pushover. He's been there, done that before. And you don't want Jared out there if he's not right. And maybe they take him into halftime a little bit and re-examine. We'll see what happens. First third down of the game for Ferris State. Mitchell with all day. He can run two. Tripped up, though, just in front of the sticks. This is quintessential four-down territory. A punt does you no good. Into the wind is almost impossible look with a who's field goal coming attempt. back out it's jared bernhardt on fourth down and short and bernhardt is kind of the opposite or the ultimate closer and converter in situations just like this and before the play timeout valdosta state we got a big fourth down coming up next every possession matters in this one Jared Bernhardt has really run the gamut tonight early in the second quarter. He came out guns blazing. He's a little bit nicked up right now, but he's back out there. And in that first quarter, Kelly, he was dynamic. Yeah, Jared Bernhardt's game is based on kind of quickness. The foot plant, the lateral movement. He absolutely has straight line speed. And he got it done early. And he got it done often. And he closes out drives. And so that's the thing, Drew. He closes out drives and converts, and you see what he's playing against is Ivory Durham. Those two guys may be the best dual threat matchup, certainly in Division II this year, are those two guys that you see on the screen. Bernhardt did get injured late first quarter. This is his first snap since. Running back with him is Jeremy Burrell, who scored a 78-yard touchdown earlier tonight. 
Ferris State 17 for 32 on fourth down this year. Out of the jumbo set. Bernhardt does keep it, and he does have the first down. And it's wing T offense at its finest. It's quarterback power. It's Cam Newton running behind two pulling offensive linemen from left to right. The running back gets his nose up in there, and then the really dynamic but gimpy Bernhardt converts and moves the sticks. Tony Anise, the head coach, told us that sometimes teams think that we're playing with 12 because of the advantage it gives you when your quarterback keeps it. On the end around, Ferris State is blown up. It's Marcus Taylor on the carry for the Bulldogs. So, Drew, what Ferris State likes to do is they will formation and go wide receivers three or four to one side and then power run to the opposite side, and they let Jared Bernhardt decide which way he wants to go. Now they're moving fast. Again to the left side. Burrell makes another man miss. Burrell still going down the sideline inside the 15. 19-yard gain. Yards after contact is off the hook for this young man. There were missed tackles on this play. We've seen a boatload of those out of Valdosta State in this first half. But you're going to see more of this as well. With Jared Bernhardt being nicked up a little bit, you will get the more lateral run game to guys like Jeremy Burrell. This time Bernhardt keeps right up the middle. Bad ankle and all takes it inside the 10. Five-yard gain on first down. Jamie on Gaskin yanks him down for Valdosta State. And Bernhardt is certainly limping, but he's going to be a willing runner as long as he's in the game. You can rest assured of that. Remember, he's played at an extremely high level of lacrosse, vying for national championships, the national player of the year. He's used to competition like this. He's not going to blink tonight. Injured Blazer down on the field. That's Corey Roberts, the nickel corner. Ferris State on the hunt for its first national championship ever against Valdosta State. The Blazers with four rings to their names. Corey Roberts, the nickel corner, the senior out of Pensacola, walked off under his own power after he went down on the last play. A lot of injuries tonight in this D2 National Championship, including one to that man, Jared Bernhardt, potentially the Harlan Hill winner as the best player in D2. He's gotten it out, though. This guy is a gamer. No question, and he will gut it out. The thing that's different with Bernhardt being nicked up, his game is all about his feet. Ivory Durham, on the other hand, can throw the football much better than Jared Bernhardt can. So it'll be interesting to see how this rest of this half plays out. Two tight ends for the Bulldogs. Bernhardt on the keeper. Bounces off one tackle. Bernhardt spins his way down toward the five. It's amazing, Kelly. He seems injured between plays. But then when the ball is snapped, he seems just it's fine. It's unreal. And what he's known for is the epic foot plant, right? Here is one of them. Then you're going to get one when he gets further outside. Right there, right there, the foot plant, the spin. We saw that literally in the lacrosse highlights that we saw. The difference is he has a football in his hand instead of the stick. Now three tight ends for the Bulldogs. Bernhardt wastes no time. Man with 25 rushing touchdowns this season is down at the two, sets up first and goal. Valdosta State has to prove, Drew, that they can absorb times like this when Ferris State is just getting heavier up front and getting downhill in a hurry. Tenth play of the drive. It's the third touchdown of the night for Jared Bernhardt. Who needs two feet anyway? 
incredible. And this is just mass on mass. How many hats can we get in the run game and block for, I think, one of the most dynamic runners of the football in college football at any level? That young man right there. Cy Barnett missed his first extra point of the night. And he's now made three in a row. Four touchdowns for Ferris State, all of them on the ground. Three from Bernhardt, who is now alone as the king of the rushing touchdown in D2. He's got 26 in nine-plus games. And in, in case you haven't heard, I mean, if you're just joining us right now, Try to wrap your head around this. He's the best lacrosse player in the country. He won the Tawaraton, which is the Heisman of lacrosse last year, after he had already decided to transfer to Ferris State and play football when the season was canceled due to COVID, went back to Maryland, scored 71 goals, led them back to the national championship. Now in his first year as a football player, he's got the Bulldogs in the championship too. Drew, a part of that story that might be my favorite is that during spring ball when Jared was in the midst of his championship run where they had eventually get beat by Virginia, he's texting Tony Anise, the head coach at Ferris State as they're doing spring install because he wants to learn the system. And he said, actually, he had a better grasp of our X's and O's than most of our quarterbacks that were already on our roster. That's what that young man Jared Bernhardt brings to the table. Valdosta State starts at the 25 for more on Bernhardt. We'll go down to Chris. When he was sending out emails to coaches to try and play football for that extra year, he told me, I thought maybe they'd pick me up as a wide receiver. They never in, in my mind was there the idea that I'd be a quarterback. But Kelly at the next level, if he has a shot at the NFL, a slot wide receiver may be the job for him. Think about that, Chris. Slot right re wide receiver at the next level. Quickness, lateral movement, an understanding of space and how to get open. That young man absolutely has a tremendous shot to make it at the next level as a slot receiver. Chris, you're all over it. His counterpart, Ivory Durham, also was limping in the first quarter. He's back and on the run. He's got a completion to his running back, Seth McGill, who caught a touchdown earlier tonight. He's got a first down for the Blazers. A game of responses. A lot of times the defense will lose the running back that the play fake went to, and that's exactly what happened with Seth McGill here. Take the fake, get out into the flat. The quarterback, Durham, rolls you direction, and you dump it over top of the coverage that didn't even know you were there at that point. A game of answers, Drew. This is a time that Valdosta State desperately needs to answer in this title game. McGill this time on the handoff. Made a couple men miss. Picks up about five on first down. And Drew, we were talking about Jer Jared Bernhardt's opportunity potentially at the next level as we see this run downhill by McGill. But remember Chris Hogan catching all those passes from Tom Brady at the Patriots. That's what I'm talking about. Maybe not a long outside receiver. I'm talking about more the quintessential slot receiver that Tom Brady made famous. That's who I think Jared Bernhardt can be at the next level. Durham throws it away. It'll bring up another third down for Valdosta State. And yeah, Durham. To wrap up Bernhardt, though, Kelly, is, I mean, he's got great size. He's six foot one. He could really play anywhere at receiver, right? Absolutely. So he has the length. I don't know that he has the ability. And we see the flag coming out late. Durham was in the pocket, threw the ball away past the line of scrimmage but there was no eligible receiver in the area. So if you're in the pocket, you can't do that. And the officials, I think in the end, made the right call. There's no foul for intentional grounding. Number one was in the area. Third down. I don't think number one was in the area code. <laughs> I did not see Trayvon Roberts outside. Do you see him in that picture anywhere? There's Roberts one. is outside running a vertical route. Oh, he's on the drag route right at, right at oh, top of Texas Oh, he's running the drag there. route. Yeah. 
Oh, man. I don't agree with that call whatsoever. Up there near the Oklahoma border, that's where he was. Another incompletion and another flag. This one looks like it'll be against the defense. He was trying to hook up with Gallimore. Alex Thomas, number zero, was all over him. Yeah, there's that press quarters coverage again. And Alex Thomas is going to get... Holding defense, number six. Ten-yard penalty from the previous spot. Automatic first down. I don't think this is number six. That's the receiver yeah. that got held up, Gallimore. But the re defensive back, Alex Thomas, was what he is called tailpiping. But he grabbed the jersey in order to reduce that separation because Gallimore is the vertical deep guy for Valdosta State. Durham looks that way. Unloads it again. Gallimore the intended target, and it falls incomplete. There's that same matchup again, Alex Thomas on Gallimore getting vertical, and Alex Thomas this time is what's called in phase. He's basically in the front pocket, and then as the receiver tells you that the ball is in the area, you as the defensive back turn and find the ball yourself. That ball was airmailed past the intended receiver, Gallimore, anyway. McGill motions into the backfield and gets the call on second and ten. Met at the line of scrimmage and driven backward by Liam Daly. Liam Daly plays deeper than a lot of linebackers to gain a perspective that allows him to read and then react. And you see him coming downhill right away as the running back McGill bounces outside. Liam Daly has done that a ton for the Ferris State. Seven tackles today. Up to 86 on the season. Durham under pressure again. Flushed out of the pocket, and he has to make a business decision. Daly was in there again. Yeah, the free runner on the blitz from the linebacker position was Liam Daly. Starting about five yards deep, he waits for the guard to engage down inside, and then he hits that crease and chases Ivory Durham outside. Loss of five forced by number five, one of the leaders on this Ferris State defense. When was the last time we saw this, a punt? What is this all about? What is this action happening on the field? <laughs> it's Eston Thiel who kicks it away. Marcus Taylor lets it bounce, and it's a touchback. Ferris State leads by 10, back on offense. Possession coming up with Ferris State back with the football one of the best run games in the country trying to make it a three possession lead against Valdosta State Kelly. This is a monster drive for that defense. I think you're exactly right because if you get down another score to Ferris State it's going to be tough sledding in the second half and remember Valdosta State was to me the worry coming into this game their defense matching up against Jared Bernhardt and company. It's a bend but don't break approach. They defend the pass well, which Jared Bernhardt does it too very often, but they're somewhat leaky in the run game, and we've seen some shoddy tackling at times. This drive is vital for them, I would think. Jared Bernhardt is back out there, gimpy ankle and all. Pitch to his wide receiver, C.J. Jefferson, who is very dangerous in the run game. Leads to a solid gain on first down. So with Jared Bernhardt being dinged up, that's an adjustment we're seeing out of Ferris State offensively a little bit. More of the true quarterback read where Bernhardt has a chance to get, give the football up at times as opposed to the design quarterback runs, which we've, saw, we've seen in buckets up to this point. 
Back on the option. This is what he did in high school, just north of Orlando. Pitches it again. This time, Jefferson has plenty of real estate, and he's pushed out near midfield. Gain of 24 on second down. And C.J. Jefferson is a really nice add in the triple option. Zone run inside. The quarterback, Bernhardt, gets to the edge, options the outside defender, and then pitches it late to C.J. Jefferson. Coming into this game, Jefferson had over 300 yards rushing. He's a really good insert into that vaunted Ferris State run game. Last week against Shepard, he had a season-high 83 yards on just four carries. Bernhardt keeps it this time. Picks his way for about five, and Bernhardt was a triple option quarterback in high school at Lake Brandley, just north of Orlando. He could have played triple option quarterback in college if he didn't want to play lacrosse. Yeah, he had opportunities to do just that, but he went and played lacrosse at the highest level and then had that itch and kind of to fulfill he and his dad's dream to play football at the college level and we certainly are are fortunate to see him doing that his dad Jim was a successful coach Penn State UCF Houston Texans passed away in 2019 Jared honoring his legacy now this time they keep it on the ground with Tyler Miner the running back for a first down Ferris State so kind of circle back drew to what Tony Anise does offensively it's what he calls a multiple option spread and they're kind of box counters they look to see the number of hats defensively in the box and where they have leverage and then they can bow up on the defense at times as well and just simply call quarterback powers with a dynamic athlete taking the direct snap in the shotgun formation simple math Kelly when your quarterback can run no you've got question. extra blocker that's what Bernhardt does here another first down for Ferris State a little awkward on the landing after the 12 yard gain yeah and I think that ankle gave out on Jared Bernhardt right at the end he definitely got up limping heavier Right at the very end, that fly sweep motion, the slice zone, and then right there. I think he really gave himself up knowing that ankle didn't feel well. Still out there, hands it off, still looks skimpy. Doesn't matter though, with Miner on the hurdle inside the five as a flag comes in from the end zone. Tyrese Hunt Thompson was the wide receiver blocking down on the edge, and I think he's going to get called for the hole. That's unfortunate because it, his block didn't matter. Holding offense, number 13. 10 yard penalty from the spot of the foul. First down. So it actually goes against Jefferson. It wipes away a 26 yard gain. Well designed play. Miner gets to the edge, and I'm not exactly sure where that occurred, to be honest with you. It was Hunt Thompson that was at the point of attack down the field when that flag came out. C.J. Jefferson was well behind the play. I think it was Hunt Thompson if it was anybody. Give minor props for the hurdle, by no the way. No kidding. It's not going to count on the score sheet, but we'll remember it. Yeah. I think that was a stellar move nonetheless. It didn't count. Three on the play clock for Ferris State, and they've got to burn their first time out. Just over three to play in the first half. Jared Bernhardt and Ferris State up by 10. It's already been a wild week 15 in the NFL. You got to kick off your Sunday tomorrow at 10 a.m. Eastern, 7 a.m. Pacific with the Countdown Crew on ESPN and the app. They go all access with NFL sack leader T.J. Watt. And speaking of the NFL, Ferris State has not one, not two, not three, but four alumni in the NFL this year. You saw Tavier Thomas there, Zach Sealer with the Miami Dolphins, Malik Taylor catching his passes from Aaron Rodgers, and Austin Edwards with the Chiefs. D2 program producing four NFL players in one season. That's pretty darn impressive. And you see Jared Bernhardt might be playing on Sundays himself. He's been banged up throughout this first half. He's currently on the sideline. Gives way to his backup, Malik Mitchell, for Ferris State. 
The give is to Tyler Miner. Miner inside the 10. Another missed tackle for Valdosta Kelly. It doesn't even matter if Bernhardt is out there. They can't stop the run. Yeah, Gaston is the number 47 has a missed tackle here. You have a free defensive player right in the hole, and it's all arms, stop moving your feet, and Gaston gives up yards after contact once again. Five missed tackles for the Blazers tonight. Mitchell back to Miner, pushing the pile down near the one yard line. Give him five yards on first down. Kelly, get a load of this. 327 rush yards in the Incredible. first half for Ferris State. I had to triple check that to make yeah. sure it's not a typo. And that offensive line from Ferris State is getting lathered up. Those guys up front get in a rhythm too, and you can see it. There are six offensive linemen that are six year guys on that line of scrimmage. So there's a whole lot of hey, let's just hook the wagon to these guys and close this drive out right here. I don't know if this is the 2021 championship or the 1921 championship. 327 rush yards, zero pass yards. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. Minor into the end zone, another touchdown for the Bulldogs. You know, Drew, when you're in that not that we've ever been in that title fight. When there's a bunch of punching going on, then all of a sudden one guy starts to impose his will on the other. It's recognizable. And that's what Ferris State is doing up front right now. And really in this second quarter, that offensive line has taken this game over. Barnett's extra point is good. Ferris State has attempted one pass all night. It was incomplete. Doesn't matter when you can run for 328 yards and five touchdowns in the first half. <laughs> this is insane. Yeah, it is insane. But here, we have a good idea. We have a template for building offenses in the future. Go find the best lacrosse player in the country and put him behind a bunch of 300 pounders and see what you can get done. It's a flashback to the wing tee. But the key is when Jared Bernhardt got dinged up and Malik Mitchell came in, there was a little subtle change and the running back started to take over as opposed to the quarterback position. The result was the same. Utter domination by Ferris State on the ground, even with Jared Bernhardt a little banged up. Bulldogs in search of their first national championship in program history. From the 10, Antoine Dixon takes it out to the 25-yard line. And now this Valdosta State offense, which leads the country in total yards per game, goes back to work. Gary Goff looking to become the fourth different Valdosta State head coach to bring a championship back to Titletown. What do you think he's telling his guys right now, Kel? His work is cut out for him. That air raid conceptually pass game needs to be front and center. The difference in the numbers that you just gave is it hasn't come against this level of defense all season long. And so now it's gonna be pass heavy down by 17. We'll see what Ivory Durham does right here. Durham is one for his last seven. Tucks it and runs this time. Plenty of speed, looks like the ankle's okay. Slides for a first down. So you wanna move with a purpose. Valdosta State has two timeouts left, so this is kind of quintessential two-minute offense. Durham pulls the trigger. Up the seam, incomplete. It was Trayvon Roberts, number one, the intended target, defended by number one, Sidney McLeod. Roberts was running the inside seam route, and Victor Talley was running the vertical route outside. And really, neither one of them was open. And Ivory Durham was very fortunate that, that ball wasn't picked off. It was a little high, plus the defensive back wasn't looking. This is a Ferris State team that's full of ball hawks. 19 picks this season, top five in the country. Durham over the middle, another dangerous throw incomplete. 
Sons the intended target. Remember that right ankle for Ivory Durham. It's the plant foot, and if you don't aggressively push off into a throw like that, that's what happens. And then it's amplified because the wind is at your back and the ball tends to sail anyway. Not an aggressive plant off that back foot, and the ball goes high down the middle of the field. What's interesting, Kelly, is the ankle seems fine when he's running. Interesting. But when he's throwing, he's sailing him high on third down and 10. Durham plants and throws. Gallimore is down there, broken up by Alex Thomas. We've seen that matchup a lot tonight. Alex Thomas, man-to-man -man outside with Gallimore, who is an explosive guy. But right at the last moment, Alex Thomas comes underneath an underthrown football. So it will sell on you if you don't push off aggressively and you don't get enough on it throwing deep if you don't push off aggressively. We saw it on back-to-back -back passes from Ivory Durham right there. Veal back out to punt, but he keeps it. He's got to make a move, unhurls it, incomplete. But there is a flag. I think there are about 72 ineligible receivers <laughs> down the field. It's never a great design when you're attempting to run for the line to gain 10 yards away with a punter. And then he throws it late and made a decent throw, but there are a ton of ineligible receivers down the field at that point. Ineligible receiver downfield offense. That penalty's declined. First down. Fair State. You know why he didn't call a number? Yeah, I was gonna say. <laughs> because there were like eight of them. That's like when it, it's a false start on everyone but <laughs> yeah, the center. Exactly. <laughs> Look at all those guys. You can't do this. It was a designed fake punt with the punter running it, or all of those guys that are ineligible wouldn't be going down the field. And that was a backup tight end, I believe, in Chris Barnett that didn't give that catch attempt a real good opportunity to happen. Malik Mitchell back to work, evades the rush once, puts it on the deck, and it's recovered by Ferris State. The offensive lineman jumped on it for FSU. It was Adam Sealer. Jackson Bull on the pressure forced that fumble. And this is the one thing that you're telling Malik Mitchell is the other team can get back in the game if we don't value the football. And putting the ball on the ground to try to regain your balance is not a good choice. They didn't teach you that in QB school? Definitely did not. Now Mitchell to throw over the middle. It's on the money. Tyrese Hunt Thompson to the pylon. Ferris State finally goes to the air and they cash in with a 47 yard touchdown. Well, Drew, we talked about when Malik Mitchell is in the game, he's a really good run-pass option guy, and that was the first time we've really seen it. It's the fake inside, and then it's the slant route to Hunter, Hunt Thompson. About every other pass that Hunt Thompson catches goes for a touchdown, and there's a good example of it. He's now caught a pass in seven games, and he's scored in all seven. 41-17. Ferris State on the hunt for its first national championship ever. 47 yards, Kel. So the zone run inside of the run part of the run pass option, and then it's the slant outside to Hunt Thompson, and then it's the impeccable timing by Malik Mitchell. Just because he's very good at it and is used to that, that goes way up in terms of the run pass option percentages when Mitchell comes in the game for Jared Bernhardt. 14 catches, seven touchdowns for Tyrese Hunt Thompson. And the fans who came all the way down from Big Rapids, Michigan are feeling it here in Texas. Most of those people are staying in the same hotel as you. I saw like every one of those people when I went to pick you up before the game. We were hanging out at the courtyard. 
Tell us about that. You were hanging out with some guys <laughs> that were a little bit lubricated that had a pretty interesting chat going. You want to give us your rendition of that? <laughs> Only only part of it, that's for sure. But yeah, I met some very nice Ferris State fans. I thought it was the team chanting they were so loud last night. Turned out to be 10 former players from Ferris State, and they taught me the chant. You ready, Kel? Yeah, I want to hear it. Hey there, wait a minute. Gotta put some dog in it. Oh, nice. Followed, followed by some dog noises, which I'm not going to do. Can't replicate that. Valdosta State trying to claw back in. Trayvon Roberts with a solid return. Maybe time for one Hail Mary for the Blazers. Are you sure you don't want to go with the dog noises? That's your part. That, the first part duet. was really good. Some dog in it. You have 10 former players that have been out late already. And your decision to go from the ninth floor down to hang out with these people because they woke you out of your sleep because they were noisy. <laughs> I got to question your decision making right there. What's wrong with that? <laughs> it's the national championship game. You got to mingle with the folks. Those guys might have put you on a spit and put you over the <laughs> fire. I mean, who knows what would have happened? I know they're excited right now. They're somewhere here at McKinney ISD Stadium. That will do it for the first half. Ferris State leads 41 to 17. And the Bulldogs get the ball first to start the second half. Domination on the ground for Ferris State in that first half. They threw for 47 yards, all of them on that one touchdown to Tyrese Hunt Thompson from Mylik Mitchell. 318 yards on the ground for How the Bulldogs. How many pass attempts by Ferris State? Two. Two pass one attempts. Completion. One went for a touchdown, the only completion. Tony Anise is the mastermind behind it all. He's with Chris. Hey, Coach, we've seen Jared try to battle. How is he? Uh, I don't know. Hopefully halftime helps him through things a little bit and he feels better. But, uh, yeah, that's exactly what he's doing is battling through, uh, you know, a little bit of pain in that ankle. Well, you've shown you can score without him up 24, two quarters to go to a national championship. What do you need your guys to remember in the second half? Just come out here. This has kind of been how we roll into the locker room every uh Every time at halftime, we're just going to talk about zero to zero. You know, let's try to beat them in the second half. And uh, we beat them in the second half, and uh, we'll be national champions. So we just got to play great uh, this uh, second half. Thank you, Coach. Thank you. He's a guy with championship experience. He's got a few at the JUCO level, a few at the high school level, trying to win one in D2. That'll do it for the first half. Ferris State leads 41 to 17. Let's send it to Matt Berry, Joey Galloway, and Sam Macho in the studio for halftime after these messages. Eston Thiel kicks it away for Valdosta. So, Kelly, what do you think Valdosta State tries to do defensively to answer that run game for Ferris State? I think it, it's interesting when you tr – I would say you have to pressure the football in some form. And Malik Mitchell is starting this second half. That run-pass option game is front and center when Mitchell is pulling the trigger. So, I think pressure the football, try to take the football away, and you're much more able to do that with Mitchell playing as opposed to Bernhardt. Because if you pressure Bernhardt and he gets loose, he's going to be standing in the end zone. Tyler Miner is the running back to start the second half for Ferris State. Flag on the play on first down. And that's the other thing, Drew, is Valdosta State needs to tackle well. They had a lot of missed 40. tackles, about a half dozen Offense, in that first half. Number 79, 10-yard penalty from the previous spot. First down. Now, Kelly, do you think that the weather is playing a role at all in terms of the temperature. It's only low 40s here in Texas, and that obviously suits Ferris State better than Valdosta State. I really don't think so. I think it's been a matter of this massive offensive line that is just rolling over people that is the difference. I think that's a good question, but I, I think in these circumstances with all that's at stake, I think it's about who the better team is. The best unit in this game right now is the offensive line that's on the field currently for Ferris State. 
Mitchell hands it. Miner with plenty of space. Tyler Miner with a major gain for Ferris State. Stays on his feet. Down inside the 15-yard line. We were just talking about Ferris State's offensive line. They cover people up. They reestablish the line of scrimmage. This is a power play. Two pulling offensive linemen hit their landmark, and then Miner gets down the field, and then two missed tackles once again on the same play. That's what we saw in the first half out of this Veldosta State defense. 73-yard gain for Tyler Miner. More of the same for Ferris State offensively. 391 rush yards tonight. No pushing and shoving after the whistle blows. It's a Valdosta team that will not go quietly. They're playing in their sixth D2 championship. They've won four in a row. This is not, not really charted waters for them. Injured blazer on the field is Jamie on Gaskin, the linebacker. Jamie on Gaskin went down before we went to break. Good to see him walking off to the Valdosta State sideline. Heavy set. And Jared Bernhardt is back out there for Ferris State. Did not start the second half after he came up lame at the end of the first quarter. Still gutting it out, though. Yeah, and three tight ends in. This is where the first half ended. That Ferris State was just going to throw bodies out there up front. Offensive line, two, three tight ends, physical run back, running backs, and then Jared Bernhardt, bad ankle and all, is going to get downhill in that quarterback-designed power game. Milking the clock. This is only the third, third down of the night for Ferris State. One for two so far. Bernhardt keeps twisted down. Short of the line to gain. Jackson Bull, the linebacker, did a really good job of feeling quickly to get to Jared Bernhardt on that quarterback read. It was run outside on the stretch play and then quarterback run inside if he read it the way he was supposed to. Bulldogs keep the offense out there with Myleek Mitchell. They're one for one on fourth down tonight. Mitchell on the keeper. Pressure comes. And Mitchell has to fire it toward the end zone. Pretty much threw it blindly. And it falls incomplete. So Valdosta State, their defense, that black swarm D, comes out with a stop to begin the second. Arrington Doolin, number seven, on the pressure. And this is a fourth down play, so I don't mind the decision here because it's going to be a turnover either way. But the pirouette and the throwing it deep, it's amazing that he wasn't called out of bounds to begin with. But apparently... That foot isn't out of bounds, but it actually is. If the defender is out of bounds and he's attached to your foot, you're out of bounds. So that pass actually shouldn't have, pass attempt shouldn't have counted. Kelly, we got to get you in the stripes and send you down there to be a line judge, maybe. I don't think I want to do that. It's too cold down there. Seth McGill on the carry for Valdosta State on the first play of a new drive, and they'll move the sticks. Let's bring Bill in to talk about that last play. Hey, guys, the reality of it is you have to be out of bounds. If you're touching a player who's out of bounds, but you don't actually step <laughs> out of bounds, you're okay. That so that, that is, was perfectly good throwaway. That is bizarre. <laughs> that is, I don't think I've ever seen that before, but Bill, we appreciate the explanation. So hanging on to the foot, the defender is out of bounds, but unless Myleek Mitchell touches out of bounds, which he does not, and it throws the ball paint. away. 
it was good patience by the officials and tough call, but they got it right. And I would say it was extremely good patience by Malik Mitchell. <laughs> Pirouetting and ended up throwing that football away, or at least giving him a, an attempt into the end zone. Ivory Durham is swallowed up. Kayla Murphy, the Great Lakes Intercollegiate Athletic Conference in there on the stop. D-lineman of the year in the league for Ferris State. Drew, we said this early on in this game that Valdosta State is a big play, explosive offense. My question was if Gary Goff's team doesn't have those explosives on a drive, can they still drive against Ferris State and get points? And they did a couple of times in that first quarter, but after that, they just haven't been able to be efficient enough. Durham throws over the middle, lots of contact, and lots of flags. I count three flags on the field. He was trying to find Brian Sons. Sintel Williams was the defender that was coming in and hooked the right arm around the waist and turned Sons completely around. And about every flag on the field came out in unison. Pass interference. Defense, number 24, 15-yard county, automatic, first down. Sintel Williams had pretty decent coverage, but it seemed like he panicked late. He was coming underneath this throw. There's no reason to grab right there. Continue to take that track underneath, and you would have ran right into that football. That was an impossible angle for that ball to be completed to Sons. Sintel Williams already has an interception today, back in the first half. Durham's throw complete and a big stick from Jameel Thomas against Trayvon Roberts really good focus by Roberts on the football because this ball was led upfield by Ivory Durham which gave Thomas the angle to blow that play up Durham is blasted in the backfield it's a live football picked up by the Bulldogs Sam Giradet, the senior DN. Leary Oladipo on the pressure for Ferris State. And the Bulldogs make another play defensively. Oladipo from the backside of Ivory Durham knocks this ball away. And Ferris State was livid before the play, saying that Valdosta State moved prematurely. But at the end of the day, it works out incredibly well for them with the pressure by Oladipo to spring that ball loose. Pretty graceful from Giradet, too, the 6'4", 275-pounder. Picked it up on the fly and almost had the opportunity to get at that in the end zone. Mylake Mitchell back to work. The end around to C.J. Jefferson, the dangerous wide receiver. Out of bounds after a short gain on first down. When we were talking to Ferris State during the week, we were really interested in what Ferris State learned from their first trip in here. And Tony and he's told us, well, the big thing for us is, A, we've been here, so the logistics of it all really was was more straightforward, but also we're so much better defensively, and that's been the difference tonight, along with this offensive line that's on the field now. Mitchell throws to the sideline. It is caught by Marcus Taylor, junior out of Orlando. Miley Mitchell, the native of Cleveland. You see the 2 1 6 on his helmet. Sophomore who threw for over 500 yards in one game, 508 to be exact, a school record on October 2nd at Northwood. Ferris put up 67 in that game, one of their 13 wins entering tonight. Timeout, Bulldogs. Ferris State. They're first and a half. We'll take it with them. 
Welcome back. You may remember last year in 2020, these teams didn't play. So some of the Ferris State players that had graduated, they just went and had full-time jobs. Liam Daly, Sam Gerard, both worked back home at Jackson, Michigan in a, at Sunbelt Marketing. It's a plumbing supply distributor. They worked full-time, they weren't playing football, and then came back for this season and now could potentially be winning a national championship. They said, hey, Sunbelt was great. Some of them are watching back home. Some are gonna try and drive down to watch us play. So pretty cool that, uh, you know, go have a full-time job, come back, win a national championship possibly, maybe go back to the job. Wow, that's a pretty good gig. Yeah. So those plumber supply guys are driving down to this game. Is that what you just said? They were gonna try to. That's pretty incredible. I just want to know where you can get four months of vacation. Third down, no gain for Ferris State. We saw Sam Giradet there with the luscious locks underneath the pink bandana. He just recovered that fumble, the second takeaway for Ferris State tonight to set them up here. See Tyler Miner, the running back for the Bulldogs. Brings out Cy Barnett, the kicker, who's also a receiver for Ferris State, to try it from 32 yards. And Barnett is true. The wideout at heart might have been good from 50 there. The wideout at heart, that is sensational. The kicker also plays wideout at times. He had a shoulder injury early in the year. And so the way he could come back the earliest was as a kicker before the shoulder was fully healed. And then when it got healthier, he could play wideout again. <laughs> and he goes and boots it straight through. That's, that's awesome. You know, he actually led the team in catches each of the past two seasons. <laughs> he still plays some wide out, but he's also their full-time kicker. You know, they had a busy week this week. Ferris State trying to cap it off with a championship here in McKinney. Getting involved in the community here in North Texas. Finch Elementary School. The, so we're reading kind of books virtually from what I understand, right? And some of those, I saw some of the video earlier, some of the players were getting fairly animated. I don't know if it was a Dr. Seuss book or what it was, but they were into it. Kelly, what was your favorite children's book oh to read goodness. to your kids? I can't even recall a children's book, to be honest with you. Mr. Mr. Toad's, Toad's Wild Ride, I think, was right up there, at least when I was reading to my kids. Antoine Dixon going on a wild ride out to the 35-yard line to set up Valdosta State. So if, if we about you, Drew? If, I, hold on, I'm still talking about the Stauffer family. No, if, if, if we polled your kids, Kelly, what do you think their favorite children's You would have to ask their mother to be perfectly honest nice. with you because um, I don't exactly remember. We homeschooled our kids, though, so we did a lot of reading in the house. Oh, wow. Yeah, absolutely. Chris, what do you read to your kids? The Pout Pout Fish is a big winner in our household. <laughs> How does that one end? It's, uh, no the, spoilers. You, you, Are you give kidding a me? smooch, and then the pow pow fish then smiles, and then he's no longer the pow pow fish. He's oh, a the smile, pout smile fish. pout. Is that we're pouting? Is that what we're doing? Yes. Okay. Well, now I don't even need to read it. I know how it ends. So does Jace read that to his little sister now? Is that what he does? Chris, I don't think are Chris is there? paying attention Chris. to us anymore. Yeah. In fact, I can see her down there. I know for a fact she's not Chris, listening. pay attention. <laughs> pout, pout fish. I'm Just a pout, pout fish with a pout, pout face, and I spread the dreary rearies all over the place. That's how it goes. Did you pick that out, or did Mario? Uh, my son. That, that, that's a household favorite. Oh, there you yeah. go. Can we, can we <laughs> see the pout, pout fish face? You know what would have been epic is having those 10 guys at your hotel reading the pout pout fish to you last night if we could have got some video. Who, who says that didn't happen? I feel like I'm making that face here in the very cold I'm, Texas weather. I'm looking at the pout, <laughs> pout fish right now in the booth. He was created to have a pout look on his right, face. Right. 
I think he should have just let him be who is created to be instead of trying to get him to smile. We like the rhyming. Llama Llama okay. Red Pajama. <laughs> Kelly, there's a whole new era since your kids have now no outgrown the house. I don't know if we had books when my right. kids were growing up. Well, players in formation. Five yard penalty. Third down. I just want to know what percent of the words in Pout Pout Fish Chris Button knows by heart. It sounds like all of them. Oh, it sounds like 100%. <laughs> a lot. We read it a lot. <laughs> but Chris, you know what was ironic is that was Drew's favorite book, as a matter of fact. He still reads it to it himself. Still is. It still is. It was on his top of the <laughs> hit list last week, as a matter of fact. Drew's book club, Pout Pout Fish. Third down and 10 for Ivory Durham and Valdosta State. Lost the snap for a second, throws incomplete over the middle. It'll bring up fourth down for the Blazers. And this is something that Ivory Durham is have to, going to have to work on in the offseason. When you have to move your feet as a pocket passer and kind of suddenly sometimes you have to get your feet under you again and make a good throw. And that was a good example of it. He's really accurate if everything is in rhythm. But if you force him off his spot a little bit, he becomes much more inaccurate. Eston Thiel's punt spins down inside the 25-yard line. Bulldogs will start at the 20. And speaking of postseason college football, it all comes down to this. The college football playoff semifinals, Friday, December 31st on ESPN and the ESPN app. Number one, Alabama. Number four, Cincinnati in the Cotton Bowl at 3.30 Eastern, 12.30 Pacific. Then it's Michigan and Georgia in the Capital One Orange Bowl. The winners play for the national championship Monday, January 10th on ESPN. That Michigan-Georgia game, whew, they're going to have to repaint the helmets on both sides <laughs> of the field in that one because some paint is going to be stripped. That is going to be old school. Oh, I mean, my goodness. If, if you think tonight is old school, we're seeing from Ferris State offensively, that's going to be smash mouth. It, it will be similar, and Jim Harbaugh will put more poundage on the field at one time, and then you have wrecking balls for that Georgia defense, and, yeah, something's got to give. Malik Mitchell running the show for Ferris State with Jared Bernhardt on the sideline. Mitchell deep throw down the sideline is caught. Xavier Wade still running. Wade inside the 10. Malik Mitchell lets it fly. Xavier Wade pays it off. 72 yard pitch and catch. And Sean Coleman was on the press man coverage outside, and Xavier Wade obviously is looking back for the football. It's underthrown. Wade makes a great play on the ball, slightly pushing Coleman by, and then the chase is on. That was a tightrope act on the sideline. Most every play that needed to be made in this game Ferris State made both offensively and defensively thus far. New quarterback is Evan Cummings. Third Ferris State QB we've seen tonight. And Tony Anise told us he had an interesting way of practicing. His quarterbacks get equal reps in practice. To the point in the first game, Jared Bernhardt didn't assume that he was the starter. He had to be told like minutes before the game that you realize that you're going to be the starter in this game. Well, he did not know that. And Evans Cummings was one of those guys that got quality reps in practice all year long. Cummings on the keep, nose for the goal line. Brought down at the one yard line. 
Ferris State up to 405 rush yards. What is the record in a championship well, game? I'm glad you asked, Kelly. 524 by Delta State in 2000 against Bloomsburg. 524 is the number. That could happen. Cummins on the keeper. He's coming into the end zone. Touchdown, Ferris State. A 50 piece for the Bulldogs in the national championship. The more things change, the more they stay the same. You bring in the third quarterback and it resembles the power game behind that really good offensive line that ends up in the end zone once again. A champ will be crowned tonight. Wow. And Who Ferris, saw this coming? Ferris State fans taking advantage of being down here in Texas. Break out those cowboy hats. Why not? Absolutely. No, no doubt about that. And the pent-up expectations to get back here once again and the promises made by these players and coaches for Ferris State are promises kept so far. Antoine Dixon on the return for Valdosta State. He is met with a bang just outside the 20 yard line. Ferris State has been consistently great offensively all night long. This run game for Ferris State has been violent and spectacular from the get go, mostly because of Jared Bernhardt running behind an offensive line Chief among them, Dylan Pasquale, the best offensive lineman in D2 this year. And then they got feeling themselves in that second quarter and on into this second half. And then you throw Mylik Mitchell in there at times running a run pass option and it's an avalanche gaining speed downhill as we speak. I would say this Ferris State offensive line, Kelly, has earned a full rack of ribs and some brisket over at Hard Eight Barbecue. <laughs> That's what you ate last night, you told me. Did you detox before you got in this booth this morning? <laughs> yeah, oh. I did with the fans at the courtyard right after. Yeah. Yeah. You had some interesting times over there in that hotel. I could write my own children's book. You didn't tell any of those interlopers your room number, did you? <laughs> interlopers <laughs> <laughs> because if it was if they were feeling it before this game oh yeah well actually they may not be feeling Pardon it Pat. after this game false start offense number 60 five yard county second down that's on the center ty henson for valdosta state ty henson's missing part of the v on his helmet on the other side there it is, you can see it. Physicality. You love to see that from an offensive <laughs> lineman. Ivory Durham back to throw for the Blazers. Connects with Brian Sons over the middle. On time, in rhythm, on target. Ivory Durham has missed a few when you make him move his feet, but when you let him throw in rhythm, the young man certainly has a great deal of arm tap talent inside the pocket. Durham finds Council Allen near more first down yardage. But Drew, once again, what you're seeing out of Ferris State defensively is there just isn't a lot of chunk yardage for Gary Golf in this offense. So it's it's hard coming. And they've sputtered in this second quarter in this Third second day. half be, with the Third lack of those explosive half. plays. Timeout, Ferris State. This will be a 30 second timeout. Getting reset defensively. And we see Gary Goff in his third year at VSU, second season after last year was canceled due to the pandemic, trying to become the fourth different Valdosta State head coach to win a championship. Here's a guy who played for Hal Mummy and Mike Leach when he was a receiver at Valdosta back in the 90s. 
Yeah, and he has some amazing stories telling about his time in that air raid offense. Learning how to read coverage is he went in one time to talk to Mike Leach on the right and obviously Hell Mummy on the left. And Gary Golf said, Coach, tell me how to run this route against this defense. And the conversation instantly turned to Geronimo Naturally. holding a drop of water in his mouth out in the <laughs> desert. And then Coach Goff just decided, um, I'm not going to get the answer that I was looking for. <laughs> His quarterback, Ivory Durham, on the keeper. And, you know, Mike Leach still texts him. He, he texted him after that semifinal win last week. And he said, hey, congrats. You're a stud. I'm your biggest fan. Coach Goff said, hey, thanks. And Mike Leach said, hey, what are you doing on offense? <laughs> well, what he's doing on offense is running exactly the air raid pass game on the pass side of it. But he goes to a physical quarterback centric run game on the run side of it. And that's where he differs. Durham is picked off and it could be six for Ferris State. Liam Daly makes a move. House call for the Bulldogs. It's a Ferris State party in McKinney. The plumber goes 38 yards to the crib. It was plumbing supplies. He's not a <laughs> licensed plumber, but he absolutely took advantage of this. He is in kind of in the shadows. And when that crosser was coming underneath, Liam Durham stepped out in front and took that one to the house. Thanks for the fact check, Kelly. <laughs> you got to be licensed to actually do plumbing. <laughs> right, That's right. different than supplies. Of course. But nonetheless, the Sunbelt Supply Company <laughs> is thrilled to see that young man have a pick six. Bulldogs indeed. I well would. on their way to be being national champions in 2021. I would say the vacation from Sunbelt has paid off for Liam Daly and Sam Giradet. Look at the move here at the end. Yeah, the little limp leg. Uh, yeah, sure. Step inside, the quarterback goes yeah. flying by. Clean in pipes. And that deep set by the linebacker allows him to read and then react and step in front. And I guarantee you that Ivory Durham did not even see Liam Durham until he was chasing him down the sideline. When he picked that one off. Okay, so if we're plumber not, if we're not supply <laughs> company, plumbing supply company. They're not supplying plumbers. They're no, supplying they're not. The and supplies. Liam Duran is not a licensed plumber. Do not call him when things are backed up in your house. However, what about Sam Giradet? Is he is same deal? <laughs> it's supplies that's different than actually knowing how to unclog the pipes. How about if we can't call him the plumber? How about the plunger? <laughs> That, that's dreadful. <laughs> Syracuse taught you better than that. Short kick for Ferris State. Dixon on the return for Valdosta. Taken down around the 35 of the Blazers. Tell me, Drew, you did not see this 58 to 17 coming, right? Not at all, Kelly. You know, I would have taken the over. And I would, I would have expected a shootout. That's what we saw last time they played. And... Both these offenses are so dynamic. The only thing that would have given me pause is the fact that Ferris State shut down Shepard last week. Yeah. And the Harlan Hill winner, Tyson Bajan. And, and that's a good point because it was a different offense with Ty Bajan and, and the Shepard offense. It was more of a control pass game and not much of a run game. It's certainly not out of the quarterback. And this was a different approach. Valdosta State is balanced. They have a dynamic playmaker in Ivory Durham. They can throw it as well as they can run it, and Ferris State would have none of it this evening. Here's Durham to the sideline. And, you know, Ferris State, we talk a lot about the offense and the quarterback, Jared Bernhardt. Yes, we talk a lot about the fact that he played lacrosse at Maryland, and now he's one of the best players in the country in D2. But this defense, Kelly, especially as the season has worn on here in the playoffs, has been tremendous. And when we talked to 
Tony Anise, the head coach for Ferris State during the week. That's a, his first response, and I said, well, what's different between your team now than the 28 team you brought here? And he says, we're so much better defensively, even though statistically it's actually very similar to the 2018 team. They're physical up front. They have Liam Daly, just a volume tackler from his middle linebacker position, and they have more speed on the back end, and they don't give up explosives. So all of that adds up to a 58-17 to 17 bloodletting, and the fourth quarter is still to be had. Did you see how angry he was there? T Tony Anise with his best Nick Saban impression. You're up 58 to 17 and still apoplectic on the sideline. Well, first of all, I don't know what that word means. <laughs> but the second thing is Chris knows this. She's interviewed Tony Anise a couple of times. He is like a flatliner. He isn't going to show his cards until the last second is off the clock. His team. Flipping it into cruise control in the D2 National Championship. Ferris State, 58 to 17 over Valdosta. The Bulldogs trying to salt away their first national championship in the fourth when we come back. Valdosta State has become the first program across all divisions at any level with three thousand yard rushers this season seth mcgill their top running back jamar tompkins right behind him and the quarterback ivory durham all into quadruple figures on the ground this year and only 125 yards rushing tonight and the head coach of valdosta state gary golf said that in order to be successful against ferris state defensively tonight we have to be able to run the football, and the bottom line is they haven't been efficient at doing that. Malik Mitchell, the lefty, uncorks it down the sideline, flags all over. He was looking for Brandon Childress. Sean Coleman is going to be the guilty party. Pass interference, defense, number 27. 15-yard penalty from the previous spot. Automatic first down. And Drew, I, I can hear people at home saying, what is Ferris State doing throwing the ball deep up 58 to 17? It, isn't that unsportsmanlike? No, it's a decision-based offense based on the look. And so Malik Mitchell is determining his best matchup and they really don't know how to play any other way and you know Malik Mitchell we expect to be the starter for Ferris State next year he's gotten some good run this season we've talked about that 500 yard game in October looks pretty good at the helm of this offense and it's a bit of a different offense when number zero comes in Kelly and the difference is it it in next year with him pulling the trigger it will be a lot more RPO heavy than it is with Jared Bernhardt. Remember, Jared hadn't thrown a football. He played three years of lacrosse, hadn't thrown a football. He had to trade the lacrosse stick in for a football, and he isn't an advanced passer. Malik Mitchell will be that guy. There will be a heavy run pass option presence next year for Ferris State when they try to get back to this same stadium in this game. I want to get back to talking about Chris's books that she read to oh boy. her children. Can we start up that list again? I have one to add to it. What do you got? So Don Watt is the head trainer at Shadron State College, which is Division II, uh -huh. back where I come from. And he sent his favorite book, children's book, Peanut Butter and Jelly. Have you heard of that book, Chris? Have you heard of that book? It's called Peanut Butter and Jelly? That's it. Peanut Butter and Jelly. I know the song, not Ball. in a sandwich. The ball's on the ground, by the way. Valdosta State has the fumble recovery, and Corey Roberts takes it near the 30-yard line for the Blazers. DJ Jefferson with a carry. Fumble on the play. Get that guy a peanut butter and jelly. That's a lot of work. Yeah, and Corey was a guy that got dinged up earlier in this game and had to be taken off the field. 
And then it's the loose ball handling, which we haven't seen, obviously, much of that out of Ferris State. C.J. Jefferson is used to carrying the football. It's Robert's second fumble recovery tonight. Bright spot for the Blazers. Peanut butter and jelly. Yeah, after, pound, after that pound, play, pork. after that play rudely interrupted yeah. our conversation. How what, dare what's, the actual what's the plot? action on the field interrupt what we're talking about? What is the plot? I, of I don't peanut know. Butter I jelly? need more information out of Don before I can really go there because, quite frankly, I had never heard of it. Jamar Tompkins going nowhere. We might have to amend that graphic. After a loss of a few <laughs> yards, he might have got back yeah. under a thousand. Um, hey Kelly, that speak. can happen, right? Yes, it can. Okay. Speaking of Shadron State, yeah. Congratulations to the Stauffer family. Yeah. Recent graduate, correct? My second in line, Max. My son uh, graduated. I actually had to go to the graduation before I got on a plane to come and see you. Well, so. Absolutely. Congratulations to Max. It was a lot of hard work, no question. So where does Max get his smarts? It depends on who you ask, actually. Um, <laughs> Max it's because wants to Kelly be a... read so many books to him as a child. Yeah. Right, there you go. Yeah. I did not read the Pout Pout book to Max. I, I screwed that one up, but nonetheless, I think um, I think Max's mom would get credit for a lot of that he didn't graduate pout cum laude <laughs> that <laughs> pout is cum laude. sad <laughs> all of your Syracuse brethren is going to be texting you and saying clean that up <laughs> you want to know what my favorite book was growing up yeah I do no David no David yeah do you ever read those no I really KB help me out no what no one no one read no David the superhero book I'm gonna assume <laughs> not a superhero not a superhero by the way um speaking of superheroes Ferris State's punter is named Quentin Beck if there are any big Marvel Cinematic Universe fans out there they'd appreciate that he hasn't been out there tonight because the Bulldogs haven't had to punt Durham's pass picked off. Sydney McLeod on the INT for Ferris State. It was fourth down anyway. They actually lost some yardage because of the interception, but it'll look good in the box score. Just like pretty much everything else for Ferris tonight. Bulldogs back on offense, up by 41. Now it's time to get funky for Ferris State. Sidney McLeod just intercepted that ball and or it went out of bounds on fourth down and turnover on downs, I think it was ruled as, but Sidney McLeod can get after it there. Yeah, if he doesn't want to be a plumbing supplies expert like a couple of his teammates, he could be a dancer maybe. You know, Sidney McLeod may have actually been the plumber in that picture. He may be a plumber, and the rest of the guys were just supplying <laughs> Sidney McLeod with plumbing equipment. <laughs> Cummins back out there for Ferris State. As they like to salt away their first national championship in program history. Yeah, they were definitely at the courtyard, Mary. Yeah, no question. You may want to go in the back door when you get back there <laughs> tonight. So Ferris State was in an epic battle with Valdosta State in 2018. 2019, both Valdosta State and Ferris State were eliminated by West Florida, the eventual national champion. The Argos. The, the Argos won in the quarters, won in the semis, and then 2020, this game didn't happen, and there were multiple promises made by both teams that said, we're going to get back to the national championship game. And Tony Anise told us that all of his seniors, the week after they got eliminated in 19, we're going to be back to the championship game at some point in time. And look at this, 58 to 17 later, and they're going to get their first championship ring going forward. And he told us a great story, Kelly, about when they 
found out that the 2020 season was canceled for D2, he was golfing with a few of his players. And we mentioned how Anis himself is a flatliner. The whole program seems to have taken on that identity because they didn't freak out. They didn't cry about it. They just said, all right, fine, we'll do it next year. Yeah, no season. Let's just finish the golf game is what Tony Anise told right. us. That's pretty special. Anise was telling was telling us that he, he found out about himself last year when there was no football that he can be a pretty good golfer. Yeah, if he spent more time, which college coaches don't spend more time golfing because it's uh, it's a difficult life, no doubt about it, but a rewarding one is he's going to find out at the end of this game. Ferris State keeps on coming offensively. The ground game is on fire. Desmond Libertus on the end around. That number, all-time record in a championship game is 527. What are we, 440 at this point in time? Yards on the ground for Ferris State? Somewhere around 440, yeah. Somewhere in that neighborhood unofficially. So if you're Tony Anise, you read an email and you bring in the best lacrosse player essentially on the planet in Jared Bernhardt, and then you, I mean, you pointed out earlier in this telecast, his quarterbacks run the football all the time. Yep. And so you have the best runner of the football in, in your program at that position. What do you do for an encore? Seriously. <laughs> It's so funny, Kelly, because he, he told us that he actually told his wife he doesn't want to coach anymore after Bernhardt leaves. That's how much he loves the guy. Now, he was he was just being facetious. He was just joking around. But that's how much he loves Bernhardt. And, and it all happened in such a crazy way. We were talking about it earlier on. But Jared Bernhardt sent emails to the top 10 teams in the rankings at that time in D2. And Anise was like, thank God we were top 10 at the time. They got the email, they responded to it, and the rest is history. And Tony Anise told us that Jared Bernhardt could have been maybe not a quarterback, but a position player on any team at any level in the country. And you saw that before he got dinged up tonight. He was the most dynamic player on the field here tonight, and he has been all the way through this playoff run. So imagine that. You're an All-American lacrosse player you decide to fulfill your late father's dream of playing football you embrace that dream for yourself it's derailed in 2020 because the season was canceled as you pointed out drew and then you go at it again you transfer back actually to maryland and go on a championship run they got beaten the championship Fair game State. by virginia that's their third and final of the half you come back at it and you end up in this game. That's an amazing story. Jared Bernhardt, the football player. Tonight, another name is etched into the lores of D2. First one played back in 1973. Northwest Missouri has the most with six. North Dakota State, now in FCS, has five. Valdosta State tried to match them with five. Tonight, Grand Valley State, North Alabama, all teams with multiple championships. West Florida, the reigning champs back in 2019 before 2020 was canceled. And that bad boy is heading back to Big Rapids, Michigan. I shouldn't say heading back. It's going there for the first time as Ferris State is five minutes and 25 seconds away from its first national championship in program history. 112 years of football. This will be the first one. Evan Cummins throws on the run. Incomplete. You know, Valdosta State, they call it title town. Those four national championships all since 2004. Valdosta High School is the winningest program in the country. So they call it title town, not just for the college team, but also the high school team, those Wildcats. You know, it's a program that's not used to being in a hole like this, down 41 points. No, a, a game that really passed the first quarter hasn't been competitive. 
and I don't believe anybody saw that coming here tonight. Desmond Libertus makes a man miss. First down Bulldogs with a flag on the field. Mason Pline, the tight end, number 81, out on the edge that allowed that run to get outside, I think is going to get called for the holding. Personal foul, hands to the face, defense, number 92, 15-yard penalty from the end of the run. First down, Fair State. So Mason Pline, the tight end, was not the guilty party. He yeah. actually had hands on his face as Ferris State marches closer to the goal line. There's Tony Anise just with his 100th win at Ferris State last week in that victory over Shepard and the Harlan Hill winner, Tyson Bajan. And we know Tony can get excited, but he oh, yeah. definitely picks his spots. That's right. <laughs> he is dialed in when it's game time. But Anise, you know, he's got the best win percentage of any coach in FBS, FCS, or D2. 116 is his record at Ferris State, about to be 101 and 16, you know. Alabama, Nick Saban, the greatest college football coach of all time. He doesn't have a win percentage that high. Whoa! That might be a record for earliest Gatorade. I was better. thinking the same thing, and I don't know that Tony necessarily appreciates that, nor did he anticipate that based on the time on the clock. That's why they did it so early, the element of surprise. <laughs> oh, everyone's getting Gatorade bass. Why not? Dudes are punching. Guys, look at the sideline. As Ferris State salts away this victory, Tony Anise has received his Gatorade bath. Lots of activity on the Bulldog sideline right now. Carson Clark on the carry for Ferris State. They're going. Bulldogs looking to crack the 60 mark. If they score here, it'll be a record for the D2 National Championship. Current record is 63 points in that same Delta State 2000 Championship we've referenced a few times. And what we haven't mentioned with Tony Anise is his son Steve is the official offensive coordinator, and it's more of a collaboration offensively with play calling. And it's interesting to talk about father and son in that position and who wins the arguments because inevitably you're going to disagree and and really it probably is about 50 50. A lot of families will argue over coaching <laughs> at, at the Thanksgiving <laughs> dinner table but they're talking about someone else yeah, right? Exactly. while they watch the NFL games. But these two guys Tony and Steve and East, are arguing about calls that they make. They found the secret sauce this year, though. What a magical season for Ferris State. 
going to be 14 and 0. Anise talked a lot this week about how it's not redemption, not revenge against Valdosta State for what happened in 2018. But you got to think this feels pretty sweet. When our game ends, join us on the ESPN app for the Division II National Championship trophy presentation. And it was a matchup that obviously ended up score-wise in a game that we did not expect. But what we did expect is for Jared Bernhardt to be electric in the run game and this veteran offensive line for Ferris State to be the best unit on the field. And they took over 479 yards, I believe, unofficially rushing. Only about 50 from the all-time record in a championship game. Wow. Special, special stuff for Ferris State. One last knee, and that'll do it. For the first time in program history, the national championship trophy is coming back to Big Rapids. The Bulldogs are champs for the first time ever. That's the right guy to have the trophy, Jared Bernhardt. What a season. What a story. Yeah. Jared Bernhardt tonight was spectacular, as always. 14 carries, 148 yards, three touchdowns, doing most of it on one good leg. Chris Budden is downstairs with head coach Tony and East. The celebration is raging on. The fans have stormed the field. There's a niece. He's, he's allowed to have a little celebration. His first championship with Ferris State. Looks like Chris has got him now. Hey, Chris. Coach, <laughs> his current players and his former players all down here hugging him. Hey, Coach. How'd you bring a national championship to Ferris State for the first time? How'd you guys get it done today? I'm sorry, how what? How'd you get it done today? Oh, I, uh, you know, we played really hard. The kids have been amazing all year. You know, they, they had so much uh, to overcome because of COVID, you know, and, and so we had to wait a whole year to play. And we came back and just had a great year. So really proud of these young men. They're gritty and tough and really happy right now. In 2018, you had 38 players that were on that team. You promised them that you'd get back here. What does this feel like right now? Uh, it feels great. You know, you, as a coach, you do it for young people. You know, when young people can uh, thrive like this, it's just, it just all their dreams and all the efforts and all the things that uh, you know the guys put into this it's just incredible so i'm really proud of them congratulations thank you thanks chris tony anise the national champ for ferris state congrats to the bulldogs the division two national champs in 2021 join us on the espn app for the trophy presentation and post-game festivities with the newly minted national champs so for Chris Budden and Kelly Stauffer, our producer Tony DeSanti, our director Tim Sutton, I'm Drew Carter signing off from North Texas, Ferris State, on top of the college football world.